showed us this this video of this old hill climbing club, and it's just these guys racing these these old flatheads, um, these old bikes, Triumphs, Harleys up this hill. There's no protection. They're just wearing these old leather jackets. We were sitting around the garage, and we came across an old video, and it was called the Billings Uphill Race. Billings Motorcycle Club was formed in around 1914, and it was just a group of guys that got together and, and you know rode motorcycles like many of us do. Then a few years later, I guess they decided they wanted to make it more of an event. So they started riding up this hill. A bunch of uh, tough dudes uh, just flying up a hill. They did a lot of stuff that you see at motorcycle events today. Doing stunts, ride backwards on their motorcycles, you know, flying through flaming walls and, and stuff like that, which is kind of cool, you know. They were doing it on, on motorcycles that had no suspension, generally hard-tailed, not even enough horsepower to get up the hill most of the time, but they went for it anyway. What made these guys so badass is just like, no helmet generally, no protection, just a leather jacket, you know, and just flying up. Just tough as nails, man, you know? I think what inspired us about these guys' spirit was their kind of reckless abandon. Just like going for it 100% and not thinking about the consequences. That was something I think that just like pulled us all in when we watched these old videos of these guys. It really did inspire an idea. It's such an iconic jacket. You know, it's a Marlon Brando jacket. It was a Terminator jacket. It, it really has so much history behind it. I even used to have a, like an old leather jacket that was kind of modeled after this kind of jacket. And I loved wearing it when I was riding, but it never kind of felt quite right when I wear it out, but I was kind of, I still loved it, so I kind of forced myself into it, you know? It always just felt a little off, and I always kind of held on to that memory. We wanted to make it more available to everyone, so we were really conscious about the fact of the type of leather we use. We wanted to use uh, a soft cowhide rather than like heavier leather, so it's easier to wear with layers. It, it doesn't look as bulky when you wear it, but it's always staying true to where it came from, its origins. There had to be characteristics about it that were different than what you normally see. And as soon as soon as we realized it's the lining, we went full on for it. The lining, it's all embroidered. It's not sublimation printed. It's something that we, we thought about every little detail in that, that aspect. We didn't want to take away from that classic look. We followed that diamond stitch pattern, which usually you'll find in the leather jacket. We use that as part of the design. There's little things like that that I think makes it super unique. And then we kind of thought about like, what feeling and vibe did we get from these guys like flying up this hill? And it was just that they were tough. And what's tougher than, you know, a Cobra and two daggers. It's just something you're gonna feel good in and let's face it, like look cool in it. You know, that was a big part of it. It was something that, that came about very naturally. We knew straight away that this was gonna be the second piece in the Outlier collection. We put a lot of thought into that as well. Just like the denim chore, it's rooted in so much history. There's so much function to this, but we really wanted to bring new life into it. We wanted to take a classic and refine it. This was such a cool project for Mark and I because everybody recognizes this style coat. And the fact that I got to make my own version of that with my friend, and we got to do that together, we got to work collaboratively, that, that's the coolest thing. It's, it's all you can ever hope for. I'm just so stoked that we get to do this. Can't express that enough.